Your strong tower. Your strong tower is within God's kingdom, which means within his word. Abiding in the kingdom is one of the keys to the kingdom that Jesus has given us. Matthew 16, 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The keys to the kingdom. As I said, there are many keys, but the, the basic one is faith in the word, the word of God. That is the master key, as it were. In Psalm 61, 1 through 4, Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. And I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. As we walk through this minefield of the world, The challenge is to be always aware of the enemy's agenda. Not fear it. Know that we are in the place of knowing that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. But to be aware of it so that we can defeat it. While avoiding the darkness of it, you can dwell within the Lord's strong tower, built up in the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit within us. The structure of the Word of God, from this place you can defeat all the agenda of the enemy, every bit of it. You don't have to be overwhelmed. It is not necessary. You can be an overcomer. In 2 Timothy 2, 2 through 5, And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Remember that. That's that's another key. You must not become entangled with the dealings and the affairs, meaning the philosophies of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. According to the rules. The rules in this context refer to the word of God, the rules of the kingdom. So, for the word of God to be effective in your life, you must live by it. As Jesus said, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word. Matthew 4, 4. But he, Jesus, answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You can't just pick and choose what you want to believe and make up whatever you want to believe to add to it that you've decided is the way things should be. That's very dangerous. Don't invent your own false doctrine and be cursed by it. You need to understand what God says and conform to it. In Matthew twelve, thirty six, Jesus says, But I say to you, for every idle word men speak, they will give account of that word in the day of judgment. Then the next verse says, For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So your words must line up with God's word. 
because his word is absolute truth. There is no other truth. There is no other version of the truth. Since those who have been born again of the Spirit are members of the body of Christ, and he is the word, we are the body of the word. The body of the word. So therefore, being the body of the word, if the word is corrupted in our thinking, then we are corrupted. When we are within the structure of the pure word, we are within our strong tower. You must stay within the word as the Bible puts it forth. God has ordained the written word as set forth, and he is the word. John 1 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. If you add other writings, of the historic time, such as the Book of Thomas, Book of Jasher, Book of Enoch, the Maccabees, and others, you are adding historic writings that are not the Word of God. They may be accurate, they may be partially accurate, they may not be accurate at all, we don't know. But they are man's Word, not God's Word. The Holy Spirit has dictated the Word of God as it is set forth in the Bible that we have. And only the anointed word has power. Other historic writings may be referenced in the true Bible. They may be be referred to. But if they're not included, it's because they are not the word of God. They are just historic writings. We have to realize this. If you give those outside writings the same significance and supernatural power, then you are corrupting your strong tower. You're corrupting the the kingdom as you see it. You can't corrupt the actual kingdom. That's not possible. But you can corrupt it within yourself. There are many writings, books of history, but none of them, are the word of God. They are not equal to the word of God. Even if they are about events and people of the biblical times, don't be deceived by including them into the word of God. He has given us his word himself. We are reborn into this strong tower of the true word. No other writings are equal to the Bible. It is given to us as it is. Don't let your intellectual curiosity deceive you. Proverbs 18.10 The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. The righteous Righteous means God's way of doing and being right. Only the true word can be righteous, can build your strong tower within you. Jesus is the word. And therefore, don't start creating your own word and thereby destroying your strong tower. In Psalm 9... 9 and 10, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble, and know those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Those who know, really know, the name of Jesus and what it means, the word, can access the refuge that he speaks of. He has given us all of this in him, within his truth, his whole truth and nothing but the truth. That's why you must maintain a pure word. That's the only way to build God's strong tower around you and abide within a fortress around your heart and mind, a place where nothing 
the devil throws at you can take you down. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. 2 Corinthians 13.5 Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, indeed, you are disqualified. Your source of strength is in Christ alone. You must not be deceived by the things that the enemy sets before you to intrigue you, to draw you into false doctrine, to flatter you into thinking that you know better than the written word of God. The devil corrupts with flattery, convincing you that you are so smart that you can discern the accuracy of writings outside of our Bible is one of his tactics designed to flatter your intellect, the flesh. That is why the word tells us to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. The flesh can be deceived. The Holy Spirit cannot and will always lead us into all righteousness. All righteousness. We need to know what this righteousness is. All truth, only truth is righteous. In John 16, 13, however, Jesus says, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will tell you things to come. And verse 15 says, And all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Just like Noah built his ark with the exact materials and instructions God gave him, by faith, so must you, to build your strong tower, to weather these evil times in safety, to overcome all the fiery darts of the enemy, every single one. In Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil that you may be able to stand. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, the next verse says, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, Stand, therefore. You need to read the rest of that that defines every piece of the armor of God so that you are protected. You are within this strong tower, within his truth. Don't compromise a syllable, let alone a word of God. You can live within this strong tower, within this place of protection and safety, even in these last, most evil, horrifying days before the trump sounds. But you have to be faithful to the word and use the keys of the kingdom that Jesus has given you. If you have any questions, you can email me at answers at bdhyman.com or call me at the phone number that's on my website, bdhyman.com. Remember, the better you know the true word, the better you know God. Amen.